Jonathan, thanks for your time and thanks for joining us. Uh, let's quickly start talking about uh, how free is the media uh, in your assessment? Thank you so much for having me. First of all, you know, World Press Freedom Day is such an important day because it's a marker and it's an opportunity for everybody to pay attention to the dangers uh, to press freedom and to journalist safety around the world. Across Africa, the situation for journalists uh, looks a grim. Uh, you know, last year there were journalists in, in jail in numerous countries, you know, seven journalists in jail in Rwanda, many of them YouTubers, um, you know, journalists uh, facing false news charges in Cameroon, 16 journalists in Eritrea. Uh, many of them have been there, uh, you know, without trial for 20 years now since the crackdown in 20, uh, sorry, in 2001. And really uh, across the continent, journalists are, are facing arrest, harassment, surveillance. There's real cause for concern. And that's why today, like every day, but really today we need to recognize these dangers and call for authorities uh, to uh, advance the political will that's needed to ensure the safety of the press. Uh, Jonathan, just uh, give me a bit, let's uh, bring in uh, Lekon, who's uh, uh, joining us uh, via phone. Uh, Lekon, uh, you know, listening to Jonathan, let's bring it back home. That's the continent. Uh, how free is the media in Africa? Well, it depends on what we're talking about. Uh, if we are using the Freedom of uh, First Index, we are not doing too well. Uh, so you have a situation where Nigeria that was 120 last year is 129 this year. And unfortunately, a country like Ghana that was 30 last year is 60 this year. So that's not a sign that uh, we are getting better. So increasingly, although we are under democracy, we have situations where the media is under repression and there is an increasing attack on journalists and safety is uh, not guaranteed. Most of we are talking about uh, media under the digital siege. So the situation, it's not good enough under a democracy. And uh, uh, Jonathan, you know, uh, you know, let's look at uh, some of the stories uh, covered by journalists. Uh, if you look at it over the years, uh, till this moment, journalists have covered uh, stories on protests, harassments and the, and the likes. Uh, are there laws in place to protect journalists in delicate situations like these? Well, really, in many countries, of course, there are fundamental freedoms enshrined in the Constitution. Freedom of expression, of course, includes freedom of the press. Unfortunately, what we see is other laws uh, that have been passed, either as part of the penal code uh, or cybercrime laws, additional legislation that curbs that basic right, seemingly. And, you know, we are calling uh, in many countries for the reform of that legislation. We'll look at Nigeria as an example. The cybercrime law in Nigeria, particularly Section 24, has been repeatedly used to prosecute journalists for their work. Uh, you know, local civil society, international civil society, press organizations have repeatedly called for the repeal, sorry, for the reform of that legislation. And that unfortunately hasn't happened. There have been, you know, similarly calls by uh, the ECOWAS court to reform that legislation. And unfortunately, the authorities in Nigeria haven't done so. We see this kind of legislation across the continent and indeed across the world uh, where fundamental freedoms, free, uh, freedoms uh, of expression and press freedom that are enshrined in, in basic laws uh, in various countries are unfortunately seemingly curtailed by additional legislation. And uh, Jonathan, let's stay with you for a bit. The arbitrary detention of journalists seems to be uh, you know, commonplace in various African countries. We hear of cases like those of Desu Dula and uh, Bekila Amenu in Ethiopia. And uh, in, in November of last year, a Nigerian journalist, Luca Beniat. Uh, now, how can this be addressed? It's, it's, a great, uh, it's a great question. You know, importantly, today, uh, you know, the case of, of the two journalists in Ethiopia was postponed. We're expecting them back in court uh, on May 12th, you know, again, you know, arbitrary detention is, is a real issue. The case of Luca Biniat, you know, he was facing charges under that Cybercrime Act that I was mentioning uh, earlier. 
what we really need is for authorities to recognize that journalists are not a threat to uh, the, the public. In fact, they are crucial for a functioning democracy. They are crucial for the public to make decisions about their daily lives. And so jailing journalists for their work is never acceptable. Uh, Lekon, uh, you know, you interface with journalists across platforms. How can they help change the narrative of the low perception or regard given to journalists? Relative, it depends on who is trying to assess them. What, what I think is important is that uh, journalists must ensure that they keep to the ethics of the profession so that nobody has any excuse to accuse them of any wrong duty, any wrong doing. And we need to understand this law and know how it works and know what to stay away from so that we don't arm those who want to accuse us of any misdemeanor. So it's important that we are as professional as possible, but we must do our work. The, the Constitution requires that we have access to information. It requires that uh, we inform the people and we should not be cowed by any law that is just meant to, uh, to, to threaten us out of uh, our work. So it's important that we are very professional, we follow the ethics and we understand the law. And we also want those who, the government officials, to ensure that if they feel aggrieved by anything, any publication or broadcast, there are enough regulations, there are enough law that they can explore instead of taking the laws into their hands. Well, in most cases, I think uh, some will say, some will argue uh, later on that many journalists haven't actually taken the laws into their hands. But in very extreme cases, uh, uh, how can the, the narrative be changed? A journalist in South Africa, Reggie said to us earlier today on the show, we are not your enemies. Why do you think governments and agencies and even individuals target uh, you know, uh, professionals, uh, talking about journalists? Well, it Sometimes they don't feel comfortable with what we, 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 we publish or broadcast. So, for example, for government, government comes and says, look, some of the things we are publishing is falsehood, even when it is happening that is true, when the facts are clear. We are in an age where we talk of evidence-based publications. You find all the facts, yet what they want to do is to label some of these things. We are not saying that there are, some not, that, there are no instances where maybe some uh, journalists uh, violate uh, some regulations. But even at that, it is not enough to have situations where, for example, I mean, like it happened in that in case of the Twitter suspension, just because of a misunderstanding, the government went after Twitter. And this is a technology that they can't have absolute control over. And it took time before they brought it back. So what we're saying is that this perception depends on who is involved. It depends on when you think that you are not being well presented and you want to get back at the media. Uh, Jonathan, let's look at uh, impunity. Uh, you know, journalists across the world have said this uh, has continued unabated owing to the fact that uh, some of these uh, uh, abusers haven't actually been corrected. How true is that? Impunity is another major concern. Of course, the killing of journalists is the ultimate form of censorship. And every year, the Committee to Protect Journalists issues a impunity index, which tracks countries where journalists are murdered for their work and uh, no one is held accountable. Uh, at the top of that list, we see Somalia repeatedly, year after year, unfortunately, journalists there are killed and no one is held accountable. We also see South Sudan uh, on that list, Syria and Iraq also on the top of that list. But it, you know, it goes beyond just the killing of journalists. Of course, when journalists are attacked in any way and no one is held accountable, that sends a signal that, that uh, has a chilling effect on the press. Even in countries where the situation and this, the security situation is not uh, as severe as it is in countries like Somalia or South Sudan, would think of Ghana, for example, attacks on journalists by security forces, unfortunately have not been met with uh, the political will to hold those responsible to account. So impunity you know, is, is a major challenge uh, from the most serious attacks, murder, all the way down to uh, cases where there's you know, uh, violence against reporters as they do their work on the street. 
Jonathan Rosen and Lake Otvo, many thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much.